Hey guys, it's Tanya Schultz. It's social chat self mode. I'm live streaming now. Actually, in person with my co host, Maria de Los Angeles, also oh known as Vice Chair Maria. I can't remember the last time we actually broadcast live, live. in person. <laughs> we've been doing this for six years and we've actually only done it. IRL in real life. <laughs> like when? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe four years ago at some restaurant or something. Yeah, I think, and it was a, um, at, at a restaurant in Midtown. We did a live broadcast. So this is really exciting because Tanya is making me her special Vietnamese tea, yeah. and we are ready to go and start the day at the crack of noon. <laughs> We start the day kind of late here at Social Chats, but we also end the day kind of late. So it all works out. The 40 hour work week just does not mesh around here. Yeah, we, we, like we have a, a, a complete week. show based on independent working and freelancing and, and modern technology right here in this living room. Yeah, more like the family room. <laughs> yes, with the dog. Because it's right next to the, uh, you know, my. My wonderful at and And a lot of Buddhas. We Not are surrounded least. by a lot of Buddhas and very positive energy in this household. And five dogs. <laughs> Here you go. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. <laughs> so today we have a very sticky subject, Tanya. I was very excited about talking about it. I'm excited. I cannot wait to talk to the director of this movie, Nicholas. Yes. Because I saw this documentary and a media preview. It is fabulous. It is funny. It points to. Is that your phone? That is my phone. Okay. You want me to get it? <laughs> and I was going to make a clitoris joke about it, but I'm going to refrain. <laughs> um, it, this documentary is amazing because it points to a very taboo subject in most societies of, about masturbation and pleasure, self pleasure. Um, but, you know, I'm all about self-care now, and and I think that it's a great, you know, thing to talk about because it really helps you. It helps you relax. You know what happens when you have an orgasm. <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> we can talk to this Sandra, of course, about yes. this all day long, um, that it releases the, your dopamines and, and your endorphins and whatever. So I can't wait to talk to Nicholas about that. I, I think it's it's a really important matter because you know sex. I, I, mean, I was raised to believe that you don't talk about sex. <laughs> no one's allowed to talk about well, sex. Well, you know, uh, I've heard some people it. from from Asian culture, Tanya, yeah. that it was like a very case society where women are not allowed to have orgasms. In fact, if you had one, you had to be shamed about it. Or in Africa, they still have clitorectomies. You know I haven't heard about of it. <laughs> really? really? Did you know about this? I heard about it, but I'm like, it's so barbaric. Barbaric. It's very barbaric. It's in and so and actually when I covered as a journalist when I was writing for City Link magazine, I went to the Exotica uh, sex festival, right? The the you know it's it's like a yeah public trade show, and where the porn stars and everybody shows up and there's very open open discussion about sex toys and you know Ron Jeremy shows up. Oh yeah, he's my buddy. I interviewed him once, right? Really? Well, yeah, we Scotty knows him in person. Yeah. We know him. He's, he's he's cool, actually. He's very cool, but he has this thing about eating off your food. Like if you if you're eating, he just stops he, what he does and he starts nibbling off your own plate. And he and he, he yeah, his weird. table manners are not up to par. Up to par. We need to, we need to talk about his table manners, but oh. yeah, he has like one of the biggest schlongs on the planet. Which I, of course, did not see. It was just an interview about his rum. But anyway, getting back to the whole thing. <laughs> boy, that was a tangent. That was a major tangent. Um, <laughs> we can get him on the show. I can call him we, him on the show for us. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we could. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, whole, the whole subject of pleasure and... Um, oh, well, anyway, at the Exotica show, there was a booth about a nonprofit that was helping to solve the problem of clitorectomies. Now, of course, okay. you, you run into the issue of, well, it's a cultural thing. Who are we to just come in and change the way that another, another culture works? But, you know, I don't think that 
a clitorectomy is not the same as a, you know, taking off your foreskin as they do in, in, in the Jewish culture, right? Yeah, my God. So, and you know, the bris, and that happens when you're very little. So it, it's, it's a culture that, that keeps women from having pleasure. And that's wrong. Like, I, think, I, think, I think the more women get more, more women have orgasm, the better the world is. I, I, that's my personal belief. I could be wrong. But less I, bitchiness. Yeah, less bitchiness, you know, because the more bitchy she is, the, you know, they say the ha a happy wife, a happy life. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure she's not bitchy about it. <laughs> but for some reason, um, our culture doesn't get that. They don't, they don't see that women are important in uh, ha like educating and well, and okay I think that, that reaching <laughs> orgasm is a very important part of self care. Yes, you know, and this is what the, like um, I mean, we could do a whole life camp about that. And we should actually, you know, like, <laughs> we about, should. like how just living a more sexual life, um, and that it's it's part of your health routine. Yeah. And so anyway, but so any, anyway, so when we have Nick on the show shortly, um, we'll be able to talk more about his, his personal experience. And yeah. he narrates this really? in, in, in the documentary about, you know, how it was very taboo for him to talk about. I mean, you because know, he goes, I'm very comfortable talking about it. I was on the phone with him. He's like, I'm, I'm right now. My well, mom now, home. yeah, <laughs> but that's, 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 that's what interview. motivated the documentary was that he, at first he couldn't really talk about it. So um, I'm, I'm going to write a Storify story for him because um, I like okay, doing right. Storify stories, especially for, you know, upcoming movies that are out and stuff, because yeah. then you know, um, I find it interesting what other people are saying out there and then putting it all together as a curator. So we talked about that. And he's like, yeah, I'd love for you to do that. I'm like, yeah, I'd love for you to do that, too, because we'll I started off with this show. And then when we're going to have him back on again for tomorrow's show with uh, Sandra Lopez. And Sandra, you know, she's an, a, a, a one taste practitioner, so she believes in orgasmic meditation. And usually it's with a partner or <laughs> someone who can, who can stroke get you off, uh, get the stroker, but never really talk about. Well, doing you yourself. know, the one, the one taste uh, practice that it does, it, it's a masturbatory practice in a way, because you're not necessarily emotionally involved with the, the person getting you off. Yeah. And, but, when you masturbate you you're with you what and you and who better than yourself to know what makes your bells and whistles tickle right because we're all different our bodies are very different and um male and female but it seems and, like and, and and nobody gives us the manual on this i know but the thing is what we're you know it's like in movies as we were growing up watching it's all about you know like uh, was it that movie american pop oh pop, yeah uh, that's awesome i love that you know it was all about his experimenting his mirror experimenting on apple pies and all those different things but it was always about men you never really see a movie about women orgasm that's yeah. what i want to know about like i don't want i don't understand why society have you have you noticed that we don't have, there's no such there's movie. There's no, what, how do you describe American Pie to a woman? Well, we don't have a penis. We can't stick in, in something in, in anywhere. So I, th I think, you know. It's a different organ. Exactly. I think, I, I, and I, I think that, you know, raising more awareness about women's <laughs> orgasm is more, it's a very important to society. I, I really feel, because, you know, and, and then, you know, when they. they and talk, the men, you know, I, and I have this discussion with my BF all the time about like, hey, sex is not porn. Yes. Um, like, you know, when the time comes and it is like a request, can you please scream or something? And no, I can't because, um, it's not natural, but people do not scream during sex unless you're being chased by a tiger or an elephant. You don't scream time. during sex, really? But why would you scream? Because it was freaking good. Yeah, but I really, really? I make a lot of noise. I'm sorry, but. Do, so do you also scream when you have like the sushi we had last night? Um, uh, that was so good. Um, oh my good. God! I'm gonna so, like so start singing like Adele, like hello. No, I don't do that. I don't no, do that you sushi. know, <laughs> I know. But to me, that sushi was orgasmic. <laughs> that was an orgasm in my mouth. So that's like, oh, I mean, do I start squealing like a pig because it's pleasurable to me every time I have pleasure in my life, which is often I because I'm a depends. positive person. I, I've had like food that's really good. And I'll be like, ah, oh, so good. Oh, ah, so good. Oh, ah, so good. Ah. 
So yeah, I've done it, but I don't scream, but like, you know, in a, in a throw of a moment. Why, why would you, yeah, okay. I, I attribute my, my quietness to the fact that I was in college for a long time in grad school and living with roommates uh -huh. and stuff and you want to be polite. Or living with families, like, you know, how, how do people reproduce and still live with families and people? You don't want to be squealing like a stuck pig. You know, I had one of my best friends from my past life, she lived door to door to me. We were like Seinfeld, right? And yeah. so when she had a guy over and she was having sex, I was like, dude, are you, are you being murdered? Or are you enjoying yourself? I don't know. <laughs> because she was so loud and he was slapping the wall. And, you know, like, I'm like, why? Like, why? what's this? But, you know, like, really come on oh my gosh i mean i'm oh i'm glad you're happy but pipe it down girl <laughs> well I, I you know i'm not gonna be loud there's a whole bunch of people next to me but i'm talking about like it was just you know in my uh, Scotty okay a little okay. moaning is nice okay but... moaning is you know like the, but it, when it comes naturally when you if you have you ever watched i'm getting turned a, on a, right a, now oh my god Tom. <laughs> no have you ever watched a crappy porn movie, like for research purposes? I watch crappy porn movie every single weekend with my boyfriend. It's so stupid. He it's thinks so it's stupid. funny. It's, 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 it's like, oh, look at this one. And then it's stuff they're saying. And he thinks it's, he thinks it's hilarious to look on my face like. <laughs> but they, they're fake moaning. They're squealing. Oh, my God. This is like the 10th penis I've had in my a-hole all day long. I'm so enjoying this. No, no. one ever <laughs> said. No, I don't think so. So men need to really, like, understand women's bodies. Um, straight men, anyway. Of of you know it's it's not about this huffing and puffing and like the call the ambulance every time you have a freaking orgasm, it doesn't work like that. I love it. In my humble opinion. In your humble. Can we opinion. call Nick because I just I just I mean I could talk about this for hours but. <laughs> well he's he's on a, he's being we have another ten minutes with okay him. so let me go ahead and just pull, I want to log into my scoop because I want to pull up some links about some of the reviews okay. that this has. Because, you know, I, I think um, I, I think this is fantastic that he's doing a movie about this because it's raising more awareness. But at the end of the day, I, I always believe that society needs to be more embracing toward women's orgasm. And what happens, well, he t there's some scenes in this movie where he, he actually, you know, where I know we're all like, you know, talking about this jokingly, but, but not really because this is very important in some societies. And like I was just talking about uh, clitorectomies, it is is taboo for a woman to have an orgasm. A woman cannot know pleasure. Oh my God! God forbid. That's because bad. if a, it's empowering, Holy if you if you know that you can have pleasure without a dude, and a, a pump, you know, putting the sauce inside of you, that 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 changes the whole dynamic of society. So it is actually a very critical cultural and political issue. This thing of uh, women's orgasms. Yeah, because you know, like in Japan, you know, they have this whole festival. All you see is penises everywhere. You see that one? The one in Japan, they have a big yeah. festival, and it's kind of and and in 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 um, it's like in Vesuvius, you know, before the volcano like blew that that society out of oblivion, that you could find whorehouses by because they had penises carved into the stone. What? Yeah, it's, it's really cool. You see like schlongs everywhere. Schlongs <laughs> in, in, in the in the in the cobblestones oh, of, the, of the Roman and, and village of antiquity. So so it's all about the, the penile orgasm, which is great. We love that, but also let's let's say something for the girls. How do we learn to have an orgasm? I mean, it's just it's it's self exploration. Can we can we we have a few minutes left? Can we play the trailer? Just a really short trailer. We can. We do that. Yeah. Also, there's some really cool people in this movie, like Carrie Fisher, Janine oh, Garofalo. Really? Yeah, they all have this something to say. Okay, so let me actually I'm gonna play it from here. God, I'd love to have microphone. Janine Garofalo on the social chats and Carrie Fisher. I love Carrie Fisher. She's so cool. Princess oh, Leia. God. She never lived that down. I Although know. I think her her role in Blues Brothers. 
It was very good. Very but good. I think with uh, with her is she's um I'm just gonna She wrote the book about the pink, remember? Yeah. But but, but with her, I, I think you She know, talked about pussy quite openly. Yeah, very I know. But now now you know I never really saw her that much until recently. Now she's all over. And people were giving her shit about like looking older. Hello. <laughs> she's old. How old is so she what? now? Who cares? She's awesome. She's awesome. I love the way she looks. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm part of the media, but sometimes I hate the media. Because the media can be incredibly sophomoric. Unless it's social chats. <laughs> We're very mature over here. Uh, We've been talking about sex okay. for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> and we're okay with it. And we're totally okay with okay, it. Okay, so should we? I'll just watch this. Which I'll watch this thing. It's three minutes and forty seconds. It's one of the first one. It's on. Not quite sh- sticky. The movie is that correct? With this Peter Hayes. I don't know. And why is it sticky? You know, because actually, that's more of a guy thing. It's a guy thing with with jizz and cum. Oh really? Okay. Well, it's sticky. <laughs> You need Kleenex for that. Yeah. Kleenex should sponsor this this particular <laughs> this segment. You crack this okay, segment. hey, we'll watch the uh, the trailer real quick so we can just play. Oh, there's a Jewish rabbi talking. Jews are like really into masturbation. Warning! There's a plague infecting our nation. Symptoms may include blindness, weakness, madness, or worse, hairy palms. Masturbation madness. Give me a break. It is no secret. The jig's up. Everybody masturbates. We know that 80 to 90 percent of men masturbate, 65 to 70 percent of women masturbate, and the rest lie. So what are we going to talk about? The history of masturbation goes back to when man was created. (laughs) There are no circumstances under which we can control masturbation. If God didn't want us to masturbate, he would have made our arms shorter. In the strictly <laughs> 1800s, women would go to their doctors, and the way the hysteria. doctors would treat hysteria was to manually stimulate their vulvas. When Alfred Kinsey studied sexual behavior, masturbation was regarded as its own healthy sexual outlet. Masturbation, like anything else, can be done in excess. I wanted to see if I could have 20 orgasms in a row, just to see if I could. 20 times a day is taking it a bit too far. I think almost every instance of masturbation in movies has been displayed as something that someone would be embarrassed to be caught doing. Paul Rubens is the poster man of the culture's tweaky antipathy about masturbation. (laughs) Do Americans have the right to life, liberty, and sex toys. The law in the state of Alabama says that you cannot sell a vibrator. But when I was asked the question if I felt that we should teach children about masturbation, my answer to that is yes. The question of masturbation is still a tough one, a sticky topic. This movie won't cause you to go blind. Wow, that is a sticky topic. <laughs> it's very sticky. Yeah, it's funny some other rabbi. If they want, <laughs> they if want to masturbate. Make an arm short. <laughs> well, animals like <laughs> animals masturbate. You can see dogs humping, chimpanzees. Yeah. But uh, and well, they so, do and they do uh and, and gender neutral. You know, like. They but do. society doesn't really. Like, like it's it's so such it's such a common thing nowadays. The society just suppresses it. It's so funny that. And that kind well, of, I, talk I, about it. You know, like the, the talk about it. That's that's yeah. the whole point of this movie. Actually. Yeah. Well, I know some people. Um, some Scotty, one of Scotty's friends in particular. I think that's all he talks about. It is is how often he masturbates. <laughs> Men just love talking about how often they masturbate. Okay. Well, that's not. That's not normal. No, that's right? not impressive. I know. But not not like how many girls he got together with, but like how how often and how long. <laughs> it's so, I mean, and I'm just sitting here like this, going, so. I mean, and I had to endure this for years until finally I'm like, this is enough. I cannot sit here every weekend to listen to you talk really? about how he much. Talks about every time he gets to. Okay. It's like we're well, like the He's a little self-absorbed. Yes. Literally. Literally. Like like it was it was, it was it remind me you know you know how Seinfeld is you know how the show when you get together with a whole bunch of Jews and they sit and talk about different things. Oh this, my God, a bunch of Jews talking about masturbation. Like guys. No, 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 no. no. Talk about matzah balls. Oh, oh, literally, 
So only this one guy in particular talks about masturbation, about his self-love of himself for like hours and how, how long it took him and how, how often he did it, where he did it. He loves dark corners. I mean, at the end of the day, did I want to hear this? Do I need to hear this shit? Yeah, no, Excuse my French, yeah, but no, it bothered me. I mean, I'm me. happy for him, but yeah, you kind of it, it bothered, maybe, it maybe keep me. it to yourself. No, though. it bothered me really Isn't bad. that the whole point? No, but it bothered me. Is it surreptitious? Constantly. We have about five minutes left. We'll give Nicholas a call. I called him earlier, so he, I talked to him and stuff. So. It was great. Good. And by the time he talked to us, we're going to be zing out on my tea, so we'll be, ah! <laughs> So how long is the movie? When when you first watched it, what did you? Oh, thoughts? it's about an, an hour an hour and change. Okay. Um, no, it's a really good documentary on the history, the cultural history of the the topic of masturbation, and um, and and it, and he has it did a great job of compiling a lot of snippets from popular cultural that we can all relate to. Yeah. So. It, it's it's a it's really a, a a health and wellness documentary I would call it. Um, well, that it's a very you know titillating subject, pardon the pun, but uh, it really is about healthcare and and you know and just being open about the thing that we all do that nobody wants to talk about. We're raised not to talk about it though. Yeah. And I mean, and then and, you know, there's a I think there's a reason for that. I mean, you don't want to be like your your friends Jubro, right? Who just talks yeah. about his dick all day long and what he does with it. And I know, thank you. I don't really need to know that. Uh, TMI. But it's an important part of healthcare. You know, I once went to I uh, in a, I had a I was on a press trip in Malibu, California. Uh-huh. And I went to some a wellness center and I had a treatment and I told it the massage therapist that I had sometimes have headaches at the time and she said oh my god just masturbate because that's all about shame and what yeah energetically your headache is all about shame so you just have to like give yourself an orgasm and then your, your headache will go away but then I was like no but you know an orgasm actually causes a vascular reaction and then the last thing I want to do is have more blood pumping through my brain when my head is hurting. But, but if, if, wouldn't it get rid of your orgasm? I mean, your headache? Wouldn't it help? I don't know. When I have a headache, like really, like not tonight I have a headache, that age-old yeah. excuse, there's uh -huh. a reason that you don't want to have sex because sex causes your cardiovascular system to work itself up a little bit, you know? So you don't want more blood pumping through your head because it's going to hurt more. I'm actually going to curate his. Um... Uh, you know, because I mean, sex is a is a, is a physical reaction. You know, do people even understand the mechanics of an orgasm? I wonder. Is it? Well, I, I mean, I when, mean, when was the first time you hormones? had your orgasm? <laughs> oh my god, I, I was like orgasming when I was like born. I mean, I don't, I was very young. Okay. I hit puberty very young, not surprisingly. And um, and I actually measured myself the first time I had an orgasm. Really? Figured it out. I, I didn't know, do that until I was 26 years old. Oh, get out. I'm I was 25 fucking, years old. <laughs> excuse me. I was like nine, Tanya. You're a late bloomer. You were late, I know. A, a beautiful I was. lotus blossom. I was married all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, screw that. Marriage will kill an orgasm right there. Um, so yeah, what do you think about like people not having sexual relations until they get married and then they're supposed to figure it out? That's not ain't going to happen. Yeah, but you know, I, I think, um, a lot of people don't, uh, why is sex education just about procreating and it. planned parenthood, which is of course extremely important, but what about self care and the, and the, and the concept of orgasm as part of your self care routine? And not of your partner, I mean, you may love him to death, but he may not be able to make you come, right? Yeah. Because it's it's a technique. It's just it's just a it's just a technique. It's like a, a practice or a running or yoga or something. And there's no shame in it. 
But society dictates shame. I guess this. You know, I mean, maybe someone can have an orgasm when you tickle their pinky, or or oh you, or you go further. You know, whatever it takes. But it's it's being able to talk about it and express yourself and to be open about it. Um. To elicit that physical reaction from from the encounter. And 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 I think it also it adds to intimacy, you know, of, of a relationship when you're able to say, you know, how many people like go through their whole lives being married and they have a, a different level of intimacy, and maybe the the wife just is is miserable and she never has an orgasm or something, and have kids and the whole thing. And I can't, go, you know, but the moment you have an but orgasm, I, but I've had, but so many women I can't go imagine through that. go through like oh, fake an orgasm. Fake, oh my God, who does that? A lot of people, a lot of young people. I know, which is why, I, which is why I say I don't squeal because it's faking. It's like I'm putting on a performance. You want me to put on a performance? I need to join the the actors' union, okay? Because I I don't do that. The same, like when I'm loving something, I do it like the way I cook by screen kitchen. I put all my love into it, and I'm there for real. I'm really present. It, it's your, you, you know, you you don't fake life. You don't go through life faking your reality right so why why with orgasm same shit people do it though i know because they're because men are like visual and they they grew up on they learn sex through porn the porn's not really remember oh my god when we did the that talk with melly of the the tedx the kind of tedx thing at the World Erotic Art Museum in Miami. And Nick, yeah. Nicholas should come and do a talk there, actually, um, about sexuality and and all the, the taboo subjects, right? But you know that we had a uh, um, dominatrix came and and did it. She was one of the speakers. About the different things that you know people consider pleasure. So it was a very enlightening evening. And, but we also had a a girl who was a Jewish who was about to get married, and she talked about sexuality in the Jewish culture. And and in some ways it's very strict, but in some ways it's very open, and it's actually very honored um, that you're supposed to like like the whole point of Shabbat is like you know hang out with your family, have sex with your wife. Um, sleep together, you know, you're supposed to have communion, if you will. I'm, I'm making quotation marks with my fingers. <laughs> I'm uh, just sharing on Facebook right now, so we're going to call Nick this. Uh, so, so that, so you, you know, you're supposed to actually have, like, set aside Friday to have sex. You know how many couples don't have sex, and yet they consider themselves couples? I can't imagine couples don't without sex. Yeah, I better get sex soon. This week. What? I haven't had sex in a week. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get some. <laughs> Good for you. You're gonna remind me. I better, I better but you can that. masturbate in the meantime if you want. Uh, I don't have time. Yes, you no. do. <laughs> no, come on. If you don't have time to masturbate, then you well, have I, a I, real problem. I do have time, but I just get so sidetracked. I have five dogs, so I just need to like, you know, and I I have to whine and die myself. <laughs> I have to wine and dye myself. Your dogs need to masturbate. <laughs> They're so cranky. Your dogs need a, an O an O practice. Maybe Sandra can help with that. No. They're not. so cranky. They just. I love them. But they're cranky. I know, they're very cranky. It's like, you know, where's why don't they bark when, like, we really need the barking? Where's the fire? There's no fire happening right now, and then they bark. You know, that's, people are so angry. Would you imagine like how many traffic jams would be more pleasurable if people were just like getting their rocks off? So like, every time there's a traffic, traffic jam, we, there should be an app for people to just turn on yeah, and they can have, just an have an orgasm. orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, Tanya? It's showing up on your computer screen. Oh, that's Debbie. She posted this. Who is this that model? woman naked. That looks like uh, Beyonce's um, dress for her. Um... And she says, would you wear that? Uh, in private, yes. <laughs> Beyonce, this is Beyonce. When, and with her uh, <laughs> statement. So let's go ahead and call Nicholas because I came and look at it. Yeah, at now her. we're getting into Beyonce. Yeah, we'll get it. Booty and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other. 
we forget it. So this, okay, but it, okay, proper segue. So this is a society we live in. That we can have beautiful women like Beyonce. She's oh my God, she owns it. I don't always agree with her, whatever political politicizing her music yeah because she's a great performer and musician she's a beautiful voice and beautiful dancer amazing body so vital and like a great role model yeah in terms of her physicality and and what you know but so we can have all that sexuality out there on stage and you have like you know what's her name twerking with her but i don't really i don't want to see that come on uh white skinny girl um the, the no. twerking girl oh uh cyrus um, can't remember miley cyrus miley yeah really cyrus. i don't want to see your ovaries in my face no thank you uh, you're cute but enough already uh yet we can't talk about masturbation it's it's a it's a very hypocritical society yeah because i'm, I'm on their website that they're, they're like they on the blog for um so I was just I was just checking out some of this stuff. So one that the post was that nine lives about masturbation. We need to stop spreading immediately. Yeah, well, masturbation is applied to the single person. No, there's a lot of people who are in relationships. Still it will make you go blind. No, that's that's an, an old myth. Eating Kellogg's cornflakes will help control your master <laughs> masturbatory urges. Where the hell they get that from? I don't know. Masturbation uses up all of your orgasms. Masturbation causes male infertility. No, uh, I'm sorry, you can't use up your orgasms. There's no no limit on orgasms. Masturbation causes erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Women can become addicted to vibrators. <laughs> masturbation kills your sex life. I mean, sex drive. Only dudes masturbate. <laughs> okay, let's call Nicholas. Let's talk. Let's call Nicholas right now. Hold on. He should be ready for us. Oops. So I'm punching in my code. I had his number right here. I think he called us yesterday. So, yeah, it was really nice on the phone. I had a nice conversation with him. It's like, cool. Okay, here we go. Uh, somebody from New York just called me. I don't know who that is, but okay, let's call him. Oops, I'm dyslexic. I'm doing three. And. Here you go. Here we go. Turn on the volume. He's doing an interview, so. I... Nicholas speaking. Hi, Nicholas. It's Tanya and Maria on social chats. How are you? Hey, Tanya. Good. How are you? Fantastic. Hi, Nicholas. It's, it's Hi. Me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes. we hear you perfectly. You sound perfect, actually. Oh, good. Good. It's I'm, great I'm to on have you on the, the show. Cafe. Um, I don't know if you've been listening in, but we've been yapping about all kinds of things related to masturbation. I, I'm sorry. What did you say? We've been yapping about all kinds of things related to masturbation since you, since we oh, great. gone since 1 o'clock. A little bit of something about it. <laughs> so um, before we start, Nicholas, can you tell our listeners about yourself and what inspired you to do this uh, movie? Is this, this is very um, what's the, why, what, controversial, I think. <laughs> it's controversial, but uh, on, Fun. on the tip it's of true. everyone's tongue, so to Literally. speak. Yeah, um, I was inspired to uh, do this movie. Um, basically, to be honest, it started as, as a joke. Um, I, it was, it, it started as this, I wanted to come up with mockumentary ideas for, for different documentaries. And then, um, I don't know how this came up, no pun intended, but eventually, um, as I looked into the subject matter, I was, I realized there was this real love hate relationship that people have with the subject it started historically hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And it still is, is an issue today. And, um, yet it's, it's one of the most fundamental aspects of our sexuality. And I thought, wow, this would really make a genuine, legit documentary. Um, and that's pretty much how it got started. And when did you uh, launch it? It was, it was January of this year? When did it come out? Um, this was February of this year. So oh, we wanted wow. to kind of bring it out around Valentine's Day. We thought, you know, we call it Sticky of Self Love Story. So we, we thought it was a unique spin on the romantic comedy. 
Wow. Yeah, and actually, I, I wanted to have you on the radio show earlier, but we had other guests and producing issues. So, um, but hey, but, but masturbation is something that can happen year round. <laughs> so, well, we call it a subject that touches us all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, and how are the reviews coming? Because it's we watched the trailer, and my, I'm actually um. And I watched the movie. So Maria saw the movie. So um, how are the reviews going? Because because it's and you had some really famous people on there too, right? Yeah, well, Janine Garofalo's in it. Um, Nina Hartley's in it, as well as Larry Flint. Um, oh, Larry and a number Flint. of really well-known sexologists and sex educators, as well as authors, lawmakers. You know, the famous first African American Surgeon General is in the film, Dr. Joyce Sun Elders. Wow. So we really run the gamut. And, and when you reached out to them, did they, um, were they cool about it to talk about it on, for the movie? Or, I mean, they thought you were crazy to create this. Well, really that, you know, for every one person we've gotten in the film, we probably reached out to like 10 or 20 others. And uh, it, it, the, it depends on the person and, 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 you know, a lot of the people we reached out to were actually already talking about it or around it or sex birth in some level. So, of course, they were more comfortable than your average person. But then... The real challenge was getting the people that were not so into it, like the like the Muslim, you know, to talk about it, or or a priest or rabbi you know, or Buddhist monk, you know. That was that was, um, of oh. course, interesting. And uh, but we wanted to have the religious perspective on it because a lot of people don't realize masturbation in most major religions is considered a sin to this day. So here, people are running around calling themselves of a certain religious background, yet um, these religions, you know believe that masturbation, fundamental act of sexuality, is, is a sin. And, um, and we wanted to investigate that further. And when we, when we did, we, we started to realize that if you really look at the Bible, the Torah, or some of these uh, you know, religious doctrines, that there really is no actual mentioning of it. So what's really interesting is how people kind of make this stuff up. <laughs> oh, and so you, you got a Muslim to go on film to talk about this? Yeah, he's in the movie, so yeah, and he and I think he described it as a lesser sin. So in other words, if you're gonna go rape someone, it's better than masturbate. Oh wow! And you also had a, had a Buddhist monk. You know, I'm I'm from Vietnam and I'm I'm Buddhist, and, and I was raised as be just so like we don't talk about sex. We don't talk about. I don't think what the word there was a word of masturbation in Vietnamese. I don't remember what it's called. I never even thought it. I never knew what it was. So. So it's very well, taboo. the Buddhist monk said there were no sins in Buddhism, technically. So he said, but he didn't know if it would lead to enlightenment, I believe is what he said. <laughs> well, and also, <laughs> aren't there some religious doctrines that say that if you, like, when you practice celibacy, which, it, now, if you're masturbating, technically, it's not celibacy. Because, I, I mean, full, well, full yeah, celibacy. Well, yeah, it really depends on how you look at it. I, I think the big issue from a religious perspective is the idea of lust. So when most people are masturbating, they're usually fantasizing and or lusting over someone or something. And so I think that's the big concern around it. I think also from a historical perspective, it's also the, uh, you know, the, the more people in your religion, the stronger the religion. And when you're masturbating, you're not necessarily making more people through that act, right? So I think it's just contrary to the concept that sex is about procreation and, it, um, and pleasure is an incentive for procreation. And that's the only purpose. Uh, then now there's a sex positive movement and it's been in existence, which our film is very sex positive. If you look at the message and, um, that states that, you know, sex and our masturbation can be all about pleasure. It doesn't have to be for procreation. Um, and also now we interviewed a, a, um, someone who called themselves the sperm king. They were Dr. Cappy Rothman in the film. What? And he, he, he basically has brought in thousands of children through masturbation because Men will go in and they'll masturbate in a masturbatorium, and uh, that's part of their sperm donation. And oh so, you know, for people that can't have kids, that's, that's one of the only ways they can actually uh, procreate. So now that whole argument that it's not about procreation is no longer valid. Wow. that's You do touch on some really major conversation well, there. Well, remember in the movie Legally Blonde when um, Reese Witherspoon's character talks about, you know, how your ma masturbatory she wins a legal case in the classroom about the the ejaculation being, you know, like every single child you make based on your sperm. So, yeah. But that's that's the guy 
that's the outcome of the the male masturbation. What about women? What about women? Yeah. Did what? you touch upon that? Well, we we interviewed a primatologist who, interestingly enough, from an evolutionary standpoint, says that the noble monkeys are very similar genetically to human beings. And the female bonobo monkeys, when they masturbate, they actually increase the, the vaginal, um, the acidity of their vaginal secretion. So what happens thereby, uh, killing off the semen. So, so in that sense, masturbation may have had a hand in human evolution because if that monkey wasn't so happy with her sexual partner, she can match, therefore masturbate, therefore less likely procreating with that partner. And a little um, population control. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, have you noticed that um, with Maria and I were just talking about that in a lot of movies, you don't, you don't, you hear more about male uh, masturbation than about female masturbation in movies and nowadays. You don't, I really don't see any movies or, or storyline about talking about women masturbating. Or it's, yeah, it's rarely suggested in movies. It's never even heard of it. Well, usually when men are seen, it's usually seen as a joke, right? And when yeah. women, it's, it's usually perverted or, or grotesque in some way, or, or something that you don't want to be caught doing, right? Yeah. You know, like in the Black Swan scene. And, um, and so we have a lot of references to those movies and movie clips in the film, and that's really reflective of our societal ideas around it. I think with women, um, traditionally, male society has dominated women's ideas on sex and what is appropriate for women and controlled female sexuality throughout history. So there, there's been this fear of women, um, you know, if they, if they take enjoyment from sex, then they may go take it from some other partner. And, and, and that's a big fear there because if you look at the state of Alabama, to this day, it's against the law to buy or sell sex toys. Oh my God. And you wonder, like, okay, why is this the case? You know, no one's running into a movie theater with a dildo threatening anybody. So who are we protecting yeah, no. here? <laughs> but, yeah, so, you, you can buy a gun, probably. You can buy a gun. Yeah, well, this is a state with some of the loosest gun laws. That's why I make that reference. So <laughs> it's really, really weird and, and concerning, you know, when you think about this and where this is coming from. Um, so, yeah, and women typically growing up also when we talked to, I think it was Martha Corner who wrote the big book on masturbation and she's, she's one of the interviewees in the film. She says that women, uh, also by their very physical makeup, a lot of, um, their sexual organs are tucked in and hidden away. It's not so out there for, as it is with boys. So they come to discover themselves later, uh, typically, probably in part because of that as well. Uh, wow. That's that's interesting. You know, like, um, so, so let's get back. I'm, I'm still like in shock about Alabama that you can't buy sex toys. <laughs> There's no sex toys. Does that lady Alabama? still run her store? That's crazy. Because I remember what, what's that? you featured that the, the, the store owner in the documentary and, and she's still running the store, but, but with hazards, right? I mean, like she, she's. Like that's Sherry Williams. And actually she finally sold her store. She had to get out. It was just too. It wasn't, it wasn't conducive to having sex toys in the state of Alabama. It wasn't very economical. And she fought that law for many years, but she even opened up the first drive-in for sex toy. So you can drive up and, and get what you want. And, uh, and she's, she's an advocate and, um, and did the best she could. And we were behind her, but, uh, yeah, they went to the Supreme Court in Alabama and lost. What? So Alabama remains the, the only state left now. There was like seven of them, and eventually it all kind of folded. And Alabama stuck to its guns and, yeah, up, what? Up, upheld the sex toy ban. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. I never knew that. So it's, 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 yeah. like, it's well, really. Well, we talk about that extensively in the movie. It's really a dry state. Really. It's literally, really, literally a dry state. Literally a dry state. <laughs> and, and has anyone done any, like, you know, do an online petition called change.org? <laughs> that would have made sense, wouldn't it? I would like if I was living in Alabama as a woman, I would be very upset. Never knew that, you know. And actually, I well, we love. We're going to be doing as part of Masturbation Month, which is May. I don't know yes. if you know May is Masturbation Month, and uh, oh, that camp, was kind yeah. of I think started with Good Vibrations and Dr. Carol, Carol Queen, who's also in our film, who's a part of the sex positive movement, and uh, she did it in honor of Dr. Joyce and Elders, the first African American and the second female uh, Surgeon General in U.S. history who was forced to resign from President Bill Clinton because um, uh, she said it at an AIDS, a, on World AIDS Day at a conference 
um, that we should perhaps talk about masturbation in, um, in part of our sex education, you know? And yeah, so the supposedly liberal president, Bill Clinton, had her fired for that. And so that was definitely, that's definitely a, a uh, reflection and unfortunately a negative one on our culture and what we've done to sex education and the state of sex education in the U.S. And in fact, Newsweek recently did an article on it um, and on our movie. And they reached out to Hillary to see if she would have some comments. But of course, there was no reaction <laughs> from her campaign. <laughs> what? Holy cow. That's, that's like... Actually, if you wanted to turn yourself off, you know how they say, like, think about baseball or something? When you, <laughs> when you want to calm down a guy's erection? I would definitely think of Hillary and Trump and... Yeah. <laughs> that would be anti-sexual imagery uh but int yeah that's really interesting because um sex education is not just about i feel about you know learning about how the reproductive organs work and and all of that but also about self-care which is something that before you came on the show oh pu no pun intended um when we were talking about the self-care and, and how that's an important part of your health right yeah. Yeah. And so. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many, there's so many positive things that, that, um, that, you know, that comes out of being comfortable with your own body. And, um, you know, it can help with the, the diversity in which people have different levels of, um, sex drive and that can help couples actually come together who are dealing with that, you know, um, so they can help balance it for themselves. Uh, with virtual reality on, we're on the cusp of virtual reality and where we're going with, you know, the ability for even young people to have access to orgiastic environments in the virtual world and, um, through the internet. And, uh, I think for us to bury our heads in the sand as to this, what, where we're going with sex and how we're going to blur the lines between what is masturbation and what is sex, I think that's just silly and, and not for the benefit or, to the health of um, future generations. So we're hoping that the message gets out about this film. And it's, um, as I stated in the beginning, it's it's certainly no joke. This is actually a very uh, interesting, stimulating subject, but um, one to also be taken seriously. And we're hoping and we're happy and encouraged by a lot of the mainstream media press we've been getting from like Newsweek, New York Magazine, the Boston Globe, um, around this film. And we hope to continue to get that in the future. And but okay, so well, that's uh, no, I'm very happy for you. And but one thing that probably those outlets will not ask you, but we will ask you is I mean, I know you this is mentioned in the documentary is tell us your own personal history about this, um, and and what led you to this because it's it's part of the storyline. Oh, right, yes. Well, so actually, uh, it took me probably about four years into the nine years of making this film before I realized. Uh, it became a struggle and I had to do a lot of self-reflection as to whether I really wanted to finish this movie and, and put the energy and time into it that it took. And um, that's when I realized, well, what, why, why am I so motivated to do this? I mean, what's so important and where's it coming from? And, and that's where a suppressed kind of memory came up of where I had been in middle school and um, I had, we were a kid joking around masturbation and somehow from the joking, I admitted that I had done it. And in it, just thinking it was normal and that they had probably done it too. And then they, 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 it wasn't a joke anymore. They, they, they kind of, um, all were embarrassed by this. And eventually rumors spread around that I was some pervert because I masturbated. Um, what? and so there was this like personal, I think, desire for vindication, um, that had been fueling the fire too to get this movie out there as I, I, the, the the middle school kid in me wanted to ask the question, why is something most everybody does so hard to talk about? You know, what is what is the problem with this? And that's when I realized um, that, that the answer to that question is much more complicated than I ever realized at first. And it took me nearly a decade to answer it. And that's what we do with the film. Wow. And in some of the great works of literature mention masturbation. I was just thinking about one of my favorite novels, um, Divina Trace where there's a scene about a, a Catholic schoolgirl who does some funky stuff with her rosary. 
<laughs> I mean, it's part of her routine, you know, it, it, and so it's in those places that are kind of what you think of as perfunctory, you know, that where some of that undercover sexy stuff happens. Yeah, there's a lot of literature that's that's um, had scenes and, and related, um, you know, scenes around masturbation, and it's also in pop culture. We kind of focus more. There are so many places you can go to kind of cover the subject. I mean, I could have done a mini series on it, to be honest. But um, as a movie, we had to kind of pick and choose, and the ones we focused on were primarily the movie world and the music world. Um, a lot of songs that are written about it. We they bought, always talk around it bought, or yeah. use euphemisms. They don't actually right. say the word. I think there's only one song I can think of that uses the word masturbation. Um, and the rest of it sort of talks around it. And Billy Steinberg, who we interviewed in the film as well, wrote, I Touch Myself for the Divinals. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. he does his own acoustic performance in the movie, which is great. And uh, kind of gives you a little bit of insight into how he came about writing that and movie. Cindy Lauper? song. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I did not know that that song was about masturbation I. until I saw the movie, and and I'm and, and that's a that's a shaming thing for me because I grew up with that song. I just thought it was Cindy Lauper being, you know, Cindy Lauper. But there you go. <laughs> she Bop is another one, by the yes, way. Yes, uh, exactly. That was written about masturbation. Yeah, She Bop. But that, but you know, like that, that's what we're saying. Like it's so I didn't know what that was until now. As as you know, when I actually went to Cindy Lauper, like a few years ago, I didn't even realize it was about masturbation. I, that, that was, I just thought it was a <laughs> fun Cindy Lauper song, yeah. like all of her songs yeah. from that time. And so uh, yeah. there you go. But you know, like the the, the way society is set, and, and it does. I'm I'm actually sharing the Newsweek story, and it's it's I, it's kind of weird. Out of all the Newsweek story that I can pin and share and curry. This one in particular, I actually am happy to dissect the whole thing to actually publish it. <laughs> I can't get that image. It's oh, so because of the Surgeon General. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm doing my own little way of of cur. Because as you're speaking, I'm actually curating all the different links about the, the movie, and like I was explaining to you earlier oh. on our conversation, because I'm gonna I wanna publish a storyfy story um, about your movie and about your work because I think it's a, it's a really important subject matter and raise more awareness and, and just to talk and I think it would be a great thing to be taught in school. I think children, I, I think it would probably save us a lot of, of headaches actually, you really think about it. But this was taught in school. Well, I appreciate you bringing that up actually because that's something we're organizing right now. We're doing what we call the sticky self-love tour of colleges or a safer than safe sex tour. Oh, wow, <laughs> From, tell us about um, that. And, and we were actually asked to screen it at uh, Arizona State University. I think Voices for Choice uh, might be sponsoring it there. Um, and then uh, University of Wisconsin, Sex Out Loud, is going to have us in April. And um, I believe Eastern um, Michigan State or Eastern, Eastern State University or in Michigan um, is uh, also going to have us out there. So, yeah, it's, it's expanding. We're, uh, we're in communication with a lot of schools and we want more to come and approach us and ask us to screen and get the word out there because we believe that's where we really can make a change for the future. Well, we should try to see if we can get them at FAU or FIU because I'm, I'm, I'm near FAU and, and actually Palm Beach State would probably do it for up in West Palm. They do a lot of movies. Yeah. So we'll reach out and, and then actually I got Nicholas, you're coming on tomorrow, right? For my social chats health show with my, BFF and co-host Sandra Lopez, who is a uh, One Taste um, practitioner. She teaches orgasmic meditation, and she's all excited. <laughs> I guess. So we're going to have Nicholas back on again tomorrow and to talk about some of the uh, part of the, uh, the trailer, the movie and stuff. So. Well, one of the things Sounds also great. that um, I, I'm starting a movement called Life Camp, which really is, is based on elder care originally, but it's about all the shit they don't teach us in school. And this is one of them. Um, you know, sure. but it, but it encompasses a, 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 obviously a wide variety of topics, and um, you know, we were talking about this earlier before you came on the show about you know how men perceive sexuality as a porn movie because that's how they learn, you know, American Pie, also, which is yeah. hilarious. Um, but also that you know, in some countries, you still have things like that happen, like clitorectomies, and then where women are deprived of pleasure. Um, in in a what seems to us, of course, a, an extremely barbaric practice, and 
and that self care is is part of you know how do you enjoy things it's about mindfulness um and that if if you have to, you know if, if you have to be in a porn movie every time you practice sex i mean how much is of that is true intimacy or really being mindful and present with your partner or yourself so yeah i completely it, agree it, so it's, I think it, that's, it's that's a very, very multi-dimensional subject. aspect of of all of this which is a very important part of health that nobody really talks about yeah yeah we we do talk a little bit about the um the fear of sex addiction and um and um and No, you know, no, actually, we're, because we it, go back and forth into understanding all angles of it. I mean, I think that what's really is is our shame around sexuality in general affects even our scientific studies of it. Because as we've mentioned in the film, um, there were two the most two recent studies done on on uh, masturbation and, and prostate cancer with men. Um, they had totally contrary uh, results. One that was done in Philadelphia said it actually prevents it. The one that was done in Cambridge said it causes it. So here we can't even get our scientific studies accurate because I believe when you're going into these scientific studies, they're not objective, not when we're bringing prejudice and subjectiveness to it. So I think really what I'd hope the film does is raises more important questions and dialogue and gets us thinking and does expand our education around a very important subject. Because as a modern nation in the U.S., we have more teen pregnancies and STDs than any other modern nation in the world. And so what we're really doing is trying to combat that and the systemic problem and fallout from this mis- from shame and, and guilt and misinformation um, bleeds into every aspect of our society, economically as well as the suffering of so many individuals. So I think it's such an important subject and people need to see it as that. Well, and I think it, yeah, and absolutely everything you said, ditto, and also I just think that if people had more orgasms, they'd be happier. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't have <laughs> like a bunch of yeah. well, yeah, but but think about war. it. Yeah. You know why are there's why is there war? Because there's a bunch of guys who like obviously <laughs> they they would rather they they have never been taught this proper sexuality. You know, remember the play Lisa, Lisa Statra when the women said, "If you guys keep fighting, we're just gonna deprive you of sex." And then well, yeah, of course you can rape us and pillage our villages, but. Um, you know, they they just took a stand, and and this is Greek, you know, Aristotle at the time, and and they wrote a play about this, about like if if you want to fight, well, we're just not going to put out, and then we'll just end society right there, right? Because we're not going to make babies anymore. We're not going to give you sons to go fight in war to perpetuate the anger. So what do these men do? Like all these guys in the Middle East and whatever, just keep fighting, keep fighting, and keep raping young women and keep and treating women like sex objects. And what what is going on in the mind of people who are, are you know, and they're probably jacking off to images of violence, and you know what what the training of sexuality is so important to education to being a human being, and it's so yeah. core to who you are. Um, you know, we are sexual beings. Even children are sexual beings. You know, children they know. Like when we're children, I knew that. I didn't was in not i mean i didn't go well know, that's, sex ed, that's a huge we, point we, we that's innately point we up. innately and, and know it because we're animals masturbating in utero yeah um exactly. and yet i think there's this like we talk about in the paul rubin section of the film there's this idea that we we don't want to see our children as sexual beings and, and the best way we protect them from sexual predators is by not talking to them yes about but it, what or, is or, but you know, what is childhood you know? what is the first thing you're supposed to do when you pop a baby out of your your vagina is to hold it it's a very sensual thing. It's, it's, it's touch, you know, being t- held and touched and, and all of these things transfer eventually as, as an adult to how you re- respond to sexuality and intimacy, right? And so what do they say? Like a baby needs to be held and massaged and touched and caressed to, to feel protected and soothed. And so sex, sex is a very therapeutic thing yeah. that we just, we just, just not, we could solve so many health problems if more people just had sex. masturbated or sex that in a healthy way. Right. Oh, you know, this, why you can't be angry after you have an orgasm. It's hard. <laughs> you so, know, I, so, I mean, it's a great 
point that you kind of make in the documentary about all of this, um, which is why I would encourage people to see it, um, to reflect upon their own sexuality. Um, and I'll just, I don't, it doesn't matter, gay, lesbian, straight, or whatever, or, uh, you know, it's a way of, it's an outlook on the world. It's very tantric. People think that Tantra is all about like sex positions. It's not. It's a, it's a way of seeing the world where you care for yourself and you care for others and it's about compassion and love. Um, and then sex is just, you know, part of it. Yeah, interestingly enough, I think there's um, some of the fear around um, self-love or masturbation has come from a fear of homosexuality. Um, in the past, the idea was if you're pleasuring yourself, you're technically, it's, it's sort of a homosexual act, or at least this is what it was believed to be in like 1700s, 1800s. Mm-hmm. And so I think that also had an impact on, um, on the stigma and fear and shame we have around it. And, and kind of to substantiate that, it, it, we've noticed a lot of LGBT communities are reaching out to us and have had a, an interest in this film and wanting to back, back this film. I, I, I believe we were at, so you sent a screener to the Sicilian DGK film festival. I didn't even know there was one, but <laughs> apparently yeah. there is. Um, and uh, there's there's a, a lot of interest from that side. And I think that has to do with, you know, dealing with a lot of shame and guilt around being who you are. And uh, when you're dealing with masturbation, it, it really taps into your ego and your own sense of um, identity and, and fantasy. So it's a very personal thing. Um, but, uh, because of that, it doesn't mean it's not something we should be able to talk about in a healthy way from an Mm -hmm. educative standpoint to be able to get past these shame and stigmas because otherwise we'll continue to perpetuate it because what people don't realize is every Mm -hmm. parent is a sex educator. Yes. So, you know, that's something that we have to look at and, um, and how you communicate and if you show shame around talking about a certain thing. Um, around masturbation, for example, you're going to continue to perpetuate that throughout generations to come. And I, I, uh, you know, and and I, I had experience in my own upbringing. My first French kiss was at the age of nine, playing spin the bottle. Wow. Uh, hello, you know, that was in a, and a curated party with grown-ups around, and yeah. it was awesome, you know. But, but you know, the the sexuality is something that we're born with. And then, like you said, it even happens in, in utero. Um, but I heard a story a few years ago about girls who, t- you know, when they, they go on the bus to go to school and they have this game where they play with, they call the rainbow because they, they will suck a, a kid's, like a, a, a male kid's penis and they put different colors of lipstick on and leave a rainbow on him. Really? And they do this in the back of the school bus. What? They do? Yes. Oh, I never did that. Oh, my God. Uh, no, of course I never did that either. And I'm like, what is that. like, oh, my, I would well, be terrified. I, I, know. <laughs> I would be terrified to be a parent today because if that is happening, and, and first of all, the women are not learning the value of, you know, so you just don't walk up to some guy in the back of a school bus and give him a blowjob, right? <laughs> well, so, it's a bit risky, I'd say that much. Uh, not only that, but what are they <laughs> learning? And so where are the parents? Exactly. So they, if they're not talking about it, the kids are going to do it anyway. That's true. Yeah, that's for never, sure. So, so <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like I, I would be, if I had a daughter right now, I would be talking to her about this from day one. You yeah. value yourself well, better, and, and, better do, that and, way and you're going to do sex. The pornography be their only form of education, which is what's going right, to happen. Right, exactly. Um, so if you're yeah. going to, you you are going to do sex, right? I mean, it's it's inevitable. So here's the healthy way to do it. And well, think about it this way: in the past, when you grew up, probably uh, I'm making an assumption here, but from what you sounds like, uh, and from when I grew up, I'm we Jurassic. didn't have this kind of access to pornography that we do now no. on the internet. And so what's happened is pornography has dominated the internet and technology and giving access to young people today. And sex education has actually, if anything, fallen down. It's been less, you know, there, there's been this abstinence only initiative that only now with the Obama administration finally, and it was proposed for, I think, 2017 to remove federal funding for it. 
um, that's kind of retarded the development of sex education in this country. So yeah. we have this extreme off balance. So mm-hmm. most kids today are being educated from pornography and the internet um, versus actual programs and, and something to kind of supplement and, and to, to kind of fight back against the misinformation that's out there. So um, it's a very important subject and it definitely needs to be treated that way. And um, yeah, and I thank you for having me on the yeah. show to talk about it. We're on the show, we're going to... Thank you so much, Nicholas, and I look forward to uh, continue the conversation tomorrow with you. And um, wow, what an, an enlightening! It's well, you know, a very I, enlightening I, week. I, I, you know, you know, I, I was just. Um, I might told you this. I didn't masturbate until I was twenty-five years old. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't even know they, that they would even. I wasn't even told about it. Really, didn't talk about. It, wasn't allowed to say anything. You know, I was raised very Asian, very Vietnamese in America. So, so we'll talk about that tomorrow with you. <laughs> Am, am I am I a BFF Sandra Lopez? Would, she's so excited about you coming on tomorrow's show. So, um, but before we let you go, we want to go ahead and close out the show. Um, Nicholas, can you tell our listeners how to get a hold of you? Yeah, you guys can. Most all our social media links and the and the links to where you can purchase the show are on our website, stickythemovie.com. That's s p i c k y t h e m o v i e dot com. We're also sticky at self love story. If you search it on iTunes or Amazon or Voodoo, you'll be able to find us on most DVD and DVD options right now. Fantastic! Thank you so much, and I will chat with you tomorrow. We'll continue this conversation. Thank you, Nicholas. Great Thank job, and I hope, oh and God, I hope you incredible. make more movies because it was a really well done documentary. Yeah, you're like, uh, you got a fan over here. <laughs> you got lots of fans, uh-huh. and we're hoping that we're gonna have to talk uh-huh. you into coming to uh, our Maria puts um, to, uh, a heart camp in May. That, you should have it on our camp. Actually, but, yeah, actually, that would be awesome. Yes. We'll, we'll talk about it offline, but thank you so much, and you have a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Take care now. Bye-bye. 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 You would be great at heart camp. <laughs> it would be great. Right? That would be, May is her. the month of masturbation. <laughs> just and, that. and then we can get Sanjaya Kenya to yeah. be involved, because remember she did the whole presentation about sensuality. Mm-hmm. That was super fun. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's it's like it goes hand. Just how like it literally went. I was like, May? Did he just say May? <laughs> I know we just we we have to though. I don't know. Like I was thinking then, but is Paramount gonna want to be associated with that? But then that's it's really cool. Like it's very forward thinking. Yeah, no, I think and this is very community involved because we're bringing together. A whole bunch of social media. That could be the elite. sex camp. The sex yeah, camp. that's what I'm saying. This is something that we all believe in and we want to talk about and so it's very share important the world. For heart health. It's very important. And it's not, you know, keep it, you know, like I said. Like I said, I didn't even, you know, I was raised to believe not to talk about sex. And my mom's probably listening and she's like, going, what the heck? <laughs> so before we go, Maria, can you tell us? Oh my how God, we're still alive. Yes, we're still, we're still live. We're still streaming right now. So I want to go ahead and close out the show. So before we go, can you tell our listeners how to get a hold of you? Well, if you can deal with it. <laughs> it's Vice Queen Maria on Twitter, Instagram, and all the networks. And at gmail.com. Vice Queen Maria. And no, I don't consider masturbation advice. <laughs> it's more like vice president. Oh my God! I can't, I can't get over that story about Bill Clinton. I did not know that. Oh my yeah, really? God! That's Mr. Horrible. Cigar, Monica Mr. Lewinsky. I know. Hello. That's like a. Uh, I have to share that. I have to share that. So um, everybody have a great day. And again, make sure you tune in tomorrow for Social Chats Health. And I'm, I got Nicholas to agree to come back on again to talk with Sandra Lopez and I. And we'll be live streaming from one to two. And again, everyone, I appreciate everyone li- for listening in. And we're in the middle of doing some stuff with our socialchats.net website. So stay tuned. We're in the process of getting a new website and be streaming off of there again. But for right now, we're on our YouTube channel, Social Chats forward slash YouTube. And if you want to be on any of our show, go ahead and um, email me. My email is Tanya, T-O-N-Y-A, at socialchats.net. You can follow us on Twitter, Social Chats SF, or like our Facebook page, Social Chats. And again, everyone have a great day, and we will be back. Tomorrow from 1 to 2. And actually today at, at 3 o'clock, I have a show with Claudia. <laughs> Elder care. Talk to you guys oh, later. We'll be back. I'll stay there, there for that. Bye, guys. Bye.